Thanks for the patience, everyone. Uh, my name is Rory Nealon, and I'm the activity manager for the Youth Mapper program at the uh, USA Geo Center. And along with my colleague, uh, Brent McCuster at West Virginia University, who also works at Youth Mappers, um, we're going to talk about two different case studies um, about using OpenStreetMap in uh, a particular participatory GIS and community engagement uh, context. Um, so uh, really quick, uh, youth mappers and local communities using OSM um, complements and enhances donor programming in international development. Um, I'll give you a little bit of background about the agency at the federal government where I work for. Um, then Brad will go through um, some background on the youth mappers program. I suspect a lot of you know about it, but maybe not everyone. Um, we'll go over um, an overview of the different engagements and Brad will talk about one in Malawi and now we'll talk about one in Cuvania, and then we'll go over some uh, conclusions and next steps. And hopefully we can get through this pretty quick uh, so we can uh, answer some questions because we won't be able to cover everything and we want to talk about what you guys want to learn about. All right, uh, yeah, USA Geo Center. Um, so first of all, USAID or USAID um, is the US Agency for International Development. Um, and it's the lead agency in the federal government um, for coordinating international development and humanitarian assistance to the rest of the world. Um, a lot of people probably know it when there's a humanitarian crisis internationally, USAID helps coordinate uh, our support and response to that. And it has the goals to uh, save lives, reduce poverty, strength, strengthen democratic governance, and help people progress beyond the need for uh, this type of assistance. And so how do we do that? Well, we work in a bunch of different sectors. Uh, I'm not gonna go into all these in detail right now in the interest of time, um, but you know everything from health and environment to humanitarian assistance, like I just mentioned, uh, food security, things like that. And I'm sure every one of you can think of a really uh, interesting use case of geospatial analysis on how to support those different sectors. And so that's exactly what the office that I work in um, does. We support the agency um, through this geographic approach to development, um, identifying um, where is the greatest need, um, how to uh, improve programming, uh, with geospatial analysis. And we do this through kind of four different kind of buckets of, of work, um, mapping and analysis. That's kind of the custom analysis we'll do for a project, uh, whether it's health or education, um, identifying locations where they should be serving these underserved communities, um, optimizing service delivery, things like that. Passive de uh, development, um, where we help the entire agency utilize these tools and it's not just housed within um, you know, one office of, of, of geographers. Um, remote sensing, um, we have a program to provide remote sensing imagery from commercial satellites to the entire agency or anyone working in the US government interest um, that's part of USAID's kind of family of work. Then of course, the Youth Mappers program, um, which we'll be talking about in a second. Um, yeah, right. Thanks, Rory. Um, so many of you may have heard of Youth Mappers. Um, Many of you in the room, I can see are youth mappers or alumni of youth mappers. So um, welcome to you. Um, I have to be one of the three co-founders of the network. Um, the GeoDiva who initiated the network is in the room. I will avoid pointing her out, but you all know who she is, I think, um, just to keep from embarrassing. But we have now 371 universities globally in the youth mapper network in over 70 countries. And so every month, um, the Youth Mapper Story Committee meets, and we accept very low barrier applications um, from university chapters around the world, including the United States um, and Canada, um, to join the Youth Mapper Network. We purposely keep that very, very accessible um, so that anybody can join um, up our network. Um, and I believe that um, just as you see yourself in the photos, I tried to find people who I knew would be here um, so that you can clap for yourself. Um, so. We have um, Youth Mappers as a group um, is one of the larger contributors as a group of uh, people not, we don't organize um, every single edit, but we contribute as a group um, over 19 million edits thus far to OpenStreetMap. We have a dedicated validation pub. There is a talk coming up uh, later by uh, some of our group on data validation. I strongly encourage you to go there because Youth Mappers is very committed to not just producing large quantities of data, but producing very, very high quality data. And we have a, a really great way that we do that. Um, so we also um, have started to build increasing attention to local community participation um, in with our youth mapper chapters. 
Um, we've had regional trainings in Bangladesh, Nepal, Malawi, and South Africa recently, as Faye here, hopefully the Philippines soon, um, so that we can um, train our use mapper chapters in best practice um, for um, reaching out to local communities and getting more involvement. Um, so what we'll do is just quickly go over the selected engagements. We've had several engagements um, over the past couple of years, but these two, we really piloted some um, participatory GIS and open GIS techniques. Um, so these were built to have OpenStreetMap as a foundational tool, um, not the only tool, but a foundational tool in the project. They combined local and expert knowledge contributing to the participatory GIS, um, also known as PGIS and OpenGIS literature. I was, I was delighted to hear the geographer of the United States say that PGS is a neo-Marxist enterprise this morning. It's like, I got flutters. I was so unhappy that we have the man telling us that. It's like official now, right? It's awesome. Um, so um, I've been publishing that literature for so, so, so years. So uh, they, this provides this sort of framework provides um, rapid and thorough assessments for these projects. Um, so we don't just go in and extract data. And this was our really, you know, we, we don't believe that, um, especially projects that are funded by US government should be like just taking the data and then using it. So we really wanna make sure that the data are left, that they're all of those principles of participation and open GIS um, are, are used and we also, use this for, um, we really get it in, in front of technology and, and software um, advances and you hopefully will demonstrate two of those really quickly. Um, so the first project, that, the first engagement that we'll talk about is the Malawi World Bicycle Relief Project, which we were um, uh, involved with last year. And so we were, worked with a relief agency known, our relief organization known as World Bicycle Relief to study how bikes could improve local market access, healthcare access, education facility access, in other words, um, economic development at really the household level. Could households benefit from uh, the uh, use of bicycles in this community? If you're not familiar with Malawi, uh, the transportation infrastructure is um, a little bit behind in terms of its development, um, sort of the standards for, for mass movement. And so many people still rely on bicycles, but they still are unattainable to a large share as Malawian households. So participatory GIS in this manner we were working with communities that used bikes or couldn't use bikes. Um, and so this helped us to understand the barriers, what were causing um, households to be less likely to use them. We used community mapping techniques. Um, we did community bicycle transects. So we actually biked with communities um, to the delight of Rory, who was a bicycle enthusiast. So we, we biked with them. Um, I like going down those roads that are not paid was fun. Um, hazards, geolocation, so where are the hazards in the community, and um, photo tagging. And we provided training and facilitation techniques um, and project management for that. So these are just some examples. Um, where Zola? Is she here? Or is she at the desk? There you are. She's right in the middle. You see Zola there. Um, it's just one of our great youth mappers. We just lo I love telling the story about youth mappers. So Zola was the president of the University of Malawi at those days called the Chenko Mappers. Um, well, she, she was one of our, they were University of Valley, one of our first chapters, and she goes back as a master's student at Western University to go back to retrain her chapter in a participatory and open GIS methods and techniques. It's just what we love to do in Youth Mappers is to provide those ongoing opportunities. But you see in the upper left-hand corner, that's the start of a community map, where um, this was a women's group that uh, started mapping that, um, that obstacles in their community, the the lower right is the final product, which is hung up. Um, and then we have our youth mappers. Of course, it wouldn't be youth mappers if we didn't take selfies, right? Um, taking selfies of the bicycles that we use to go um, through the area. So Rory is now going to talk about the USDA FAS project. Cool. Um, and it's nice to see a few other people who are involved in this project in the room as well. Um, so please don't, you know, you can correct me later if I mischaracterize. Right. Um, but this was a really unique opportunity. I think it was one of the first times um, that we collaborated with another federal government agency. Um, and that might not sound that impressive to a lot of people not involved in the federal government, but it's a big deal. It's really hard and complicated to do that um, and takes a lot of, of meetings. Uh, so, yeah, I think you're in, in, in too many of those meetings, unfortunately, but uh, you're still around to, to hang out. Uh, so it must have been not too bad. Um, but yeah, we worked with the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture's Foreign Ag Service um, to help improve their machine learning algorithms, which use uh, satellite imagery to estimate uh, the species or type of crops being grown in a location, 
um, and estimate yields. And unfortunately, there's an issue with the amount of ground truth data um, um, that is available to them uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa. So we wanted the pilot to see if youth mappers could go out to these fields, survey them, and help produce that uh, ground truth uh, data in a uh, kind of um, collaborative manner. Um, but we didn't want, just want to be extractive, as Brent mentioned earlier. Um, we wanted to get community consent and community involvement and community to inform us where to go and what to look at. Um, so we did kind of two different aspects to this project. First, we did a farmer interview um, portion. Unfortunately, we didn't get to do as many of those as we wanted to do um, because of, of uh, spending a lot of time getting permissions to meet with the community members, to do the surveys, um, you know, trying to be as ethical as possible in the process. Um, and so um, one of the lessons learned is to dedicate way more time for, for getting permissions uh, and to prioritize maybe the farmer interviews over the participatory uh, part of the project that we did later. Um, and that's where we used um, a projector with OSM base maps being involved to have the farmers identify the locations of their own fields and tell us what's being grown there and to go over the conditions of the crops and the issues that they faced uh, in this current growing season uh, so we could have that context when we were working on the uh, project itself. Um, one of the things that was really nice about working with OpenStreetMap is that another local organization, Open Map Development Tanzania, um, had already gone through the area we were working in and had mapped uh, all the uh, grain mills in the area in the previous uh, survey for the World Food Program. And these grain mills were crucial uh, for the farmers who have very little to no map literacy help identify the location of their fields because they would first go to the, their local grain mill and then we would be able to find their farms using that as a reference point. The other part of the project was a participatory GIS project uh, where we did community mapping to look at the assets that are important to them in the agricultural uh, market system. Um, very similar to what we did in Malawi, but this time for uh, folks on agriculture. Um, and that's where we split the room into two halves and had them use pen and paper to draw maps. Um, and here you can see us using the, the projector. Um, thanks to Brent for having an amazing mobile projector. Um, and on the right, you can see the two different maps that were made of the community um, by the men and women's group. And uh, shout out to Lisa Holstein from the Foreign Ag Service who helped us work there and work with the farmers and the mappers in the picture. Um, so real quick, um, some conclusions and next steps. Um, each of these engagements obviously are very unique, um, but there's some kind of uh, similarities we can draw between them. Um, pen and paper work really well, um, but there is room for innovative methods and hardware and software like OpenStreetMap um, to get these done. Um, maybe not kind of innovative in the sense of the whole geospatial industry, but in this kind of niche slice of it. Um, if the folks from Apple here or Meta want to give us some headsets to work with for VR, we'll be happy to pilot that in the next iteration of this project. Um, yep, time is always kind of like the most valuable resource when working on these projects. Time for permissions, time to explain the project, time for community members to interact with the different tools you're using uh, cannot be uh, understated. As much time as you can give um, is super important. And also not to over facilitate these meetings. Uh, to make sure you give the community space to come up with these ideas themselves and not to be totally prescriptive and uh, tell them what to map, even though that's very tempting to geographers most of the times. Um, so what are we going to do with these pilot studies? Um, we're going to really use this to inform uh, as best we can as the uh, as geographers, uh, USA's localization efforts. Uh, there's a big kind of trend in pushing the agency to kind of move away from uh, funding these large kind of development corporations uh, to, to have implement the programs in the various countries, but to identify more local solutions and more local organizations to work on these projects. Um, there's been a lot of participatory GIS work already done at USAID uh, around kind of improving land tenure rights. Um, we have a program called MAST, um, and so we can incorporate um, this into a more broader approach, we hope, um, and uh, kind of, um, uh, yeah, try to normalize it across the agency as an important tool. Um, we also want to continue to train youth mappers on this method. We think it's really important skill for them to have, um, diversifies their skill sets, and really lets them apply OpenStreetMap in a practical um, setting. And of course, I think we're going to try to write a journal out of this. Um, so any suggestions of feedback and articles to write or approaches to take would be really much appreciated. And 
Uh, I think we're done.